あそうだってねうん出しゃむりゃうんあずいかしでで飲むすん食べしゃ飲むすん食べしゃいちやばんせいべくんろぶじ We need to next. We need to cover the sources for telling for determining what th- th- uh, meat that is、uh, triply pure or pure in th- the three ways comes from. So I need, I'd like to show this to you. Now I forgot to uh, 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 I forgot to show that you this here. These are the words from the、uh, these are the quotes from the ninth karmapas. Uh, uh, from the Ninth Karmapa's rules for the uh, for the rules for the guard encampment. Now, these are the quotes from the uh, uh, from the Vinaya, t-、uh, Vinaya commentary, the Orb of the Sun, and from the Hundred Short Instructions. So, now here,、um, maybe perhaps it's better to start out explaining this way. Now, the sources for the or the the background story for the meat that is pure in the three ways.、Uh, in the fourth century, there was a Vinaya master named, a Chinese Vinaya master named、uh, Vinaya Life. He was one of the earliest who went to. And he went to the. He was one of the. He was a Sri Lankan master. He went to the. Um, and he was one of the earliest masters who went to China, the Sri Lanka master. And he wrote these,、um, and he wrote these、uh, a travel account of his travels to going to that. He, so, this, excuse me, this Chinese master went to India. And the main reason he went was to find complete texts on the Vinaya. So that is the reason why he went from China to India. <coughs> And so when he, when he returned to China from India, he brought with him many Vinaya texts from、uh, different, uh, from different Chinese,、uh, from different schools. And at the same time, he took a, at that time, he brought a Sinhalese or Sri Lankan manuscript. There was, a, there was a master called Chatspin or Chi Pin, a small country that in the fifth century was to the west of China. And there was a Vinay master named Bidulai from that region. And he broke it down in, in Chinese and then. A fourth a master by named Dharma Light then uh, uh, translated. And so this is a, a, a five sections of the Vinaya of the Mahesheya Shikasko. And so the manuscript for this was the one that was brought from、uh, Sri Lanka. By, and so in this case, and this is translated by the master,、uh, the Victoria,、um, uh, the Ornament of Progen is the name of the master. Now, I forgot it. I translated this the other day, but I didn't, but I don't think it did it turn out exactly right. I said it didn't, I don't think it turned out all quite right, but I thought it just, it, you know, I translated it to, to, I basically translated it to give something to show to all of you. And what it says is when the Tathagata was traveling to Vaishali, He went to a monastery where he taught the Dharma on the banks of Markata Hrada. So,、uh, this is a region of Vaishali. There's a place called Markata Hrada. So, it's like a, a, a river or, or a lake. The reason why it's called,、uh, it's called the, the monkey pond, actually. And the reason it was called this is called the Markata or monkey,、uh, monkey pond. There was a, he stayed at a monastery at that point. On that occasion, there was a general named Lion. He said that general named Lion. 
in our Mula Sarvastavada Vinaya structures that are in the Tibetan translators, in the Tibetan conjurer, uh, this is mentioned, he is mentioned in the Mula Sarvastavada descriptions, but there are two different uh, translations. One of the, in, there are two different ways his name is translated. One is translated as the captain Senge, uh, another is translated as a general, uh, but, but the same person. If we look for the mass uh, for the general lion, uh, there was a uh, merchant, or there's a general named Lion who served the uh, served the Sangha, and at, same, and at the later time he uh, became very poor and had very little to eat, and so this is uh, and so this is in our Vinaya scriptures. Because if you look for the uh, general, uh, the general lion, uh, you will see many of these events described. And so this general, uh, so I'll, uh, so I'll explain more about this uh, captain of the lion. I also said, so, and basically when you say captain or general, it's the meaning is the same. And his name was lion or Sima. And he was a student of the Jain Chichinigranta. Was he there? Is he was the the he was a student of the teacher Naganta, uh, who was a Jain teacher at the time of the Buddha. So he had heard that the Bhagavan came to this town and heard the great renown of the name Tathagat, complete perfect Buddha. With delight, he said, "I would like to see such a Tathagat and hear the Dharma." And he immediately prepared and prepared us to write and left. Now I will just say the mean say the main point of the meaning. You can read it. So he understood that he heard that the Buddha said, "This is wonderful. I'd like to go see the Buddha and hear the Dharma." He said, and so he immediately got his horses and and carriage ready and went to go see the uh, the Buddha. And from far away, he saw the body of the the Tathagatas of the body that was like a mountain of gold. And when he saw that. He came to before the Buddha, uh, prostrated with his head to the Buddha's feet and sat to one side. And after he sat down, the Bhagavan taught for the sake, for his sake, for the general uh, uh, Simha's court, he taught to the many teachings on the, on the four tr noble truths. And while he was sitting there, he gained the Immaculate Eye of Dharma, Dharma, which means that he saw the truth. He saw the nature of the truth. Then the general had got up and he kneeled and he said, I would like to invite the Buddha and the entire Sangha to a meal. And would it be okay, he said. And when he asked this, the Buddha then said, accept it. He said, it's okay. And the general understood that the Buddha had accepted him. He was really happy. And he went back to his house. And he told the people who would often buy meat for him to buy all the meat of all the animals of, of animals who had animals had died and who had not been slaughtered, but people who had naturally died, to buy all of that meat regardless of the cost. And when he bought them all, then that person went and bought all the meat of uh, animals who had recently died, and then. He spent the entire uh, night making all the various different delicious meat dishes. And the next morning when the sun rose, they then prepared the seats and when everything was ready, he went back to the Buddha. The general went back to see the Buddha and said, now the food and the seats are all ready. So now, now please Buddha tell me when you're going to come. And then the Bhagavan, immediately uh, with an entourage of the Sangha went to the uh, general's house. And they sat down on the seats that the, that the general had prepared and the general himself with his own hands actually served the, uh, served the Sangha. He was very, uh, what happened instead of, he didn't get all frenzied, but he was really happy. And then at that point, there, there are the students of, of the Jain teacher Nagranta, and his students 
had heard that the general line had, had invited the Buddha and the Sangha and prepared a great feast offering with meat. And they got really envious of this. And because the reason for that is that he was a student of the Jain teacher Nigranta. And not, he was a student of Nigranta, but now he was like um, making offer to the Buddha. They got really jealous of this. And so what they did is they went down the side and they went all the, all the intersections of the roads. And they said as loud as they saying as loud as they can, General Lion has turned away from his teacher. He's lost the meaning of Dharma. And say, but if we said this, he's broken his commitments. And today he has, he has, he has offered the meat of go goats, that, and goats that have been killed and offered them to the false spiritual teacher Gautama, that is a, an, an incorrect spiritual teacher. And so they said this like with song and in melodies. And they went down this, all the different roads and side roads and everywhere uh, declaring this. And when they went to see this, and now the bhikkhus heard this, right? The bhikkhus who came with the Buddha heard this. And when they heard that, they, they didn't dare to eat. And when they didn't dare to eat, then, then the general lion uh, saw this and he understood this. And he immediately knelt down with his knee on the ground and said to the, to the Buddha, hey, students of Nigranta, uh, have have despaired to the Buddha saying that he's doing something that he hasn't. If from today on, as long as I live, I will not intentionally knife. And if I make that, and so, and so these uh, uh, these the meat that you're eating is not uh, food that was uh, slaughtered uh, to eat, and so it was just naturally the animals that died a natural death. So I mean, the book should not have any susp uh, suspicions or have doubts. And the, and the Bhagavan said to the bishops, oh, okay, you don't need to worry about it. Enjoy it as you wish. Please have your meal. And then after the meal, then he gave, uh, he passed, uh, distributed water for them to wash their hands. Then in the old tradition, is then he sat down on a small seat in front of the uh, Buddha. And the Buddha said uh, re words of rejoicing and uh, and told him how it was good that he'd make the offering and very good that he had made the offering to the Sangha. And so he said these words of praise and rejoicing. And, he's, and then the Buddha uh, rose from his seat and left. And then we went back. They'd gone to the general lion's house and eaten the, eaten the, the meal. And the non-Buddhists had had uh, dis had despaired to the Buddha and said there's so much that happened that the, the Bhagavan then gathered all the song he, he summoned all the song and he said to them in particular and what he said to them is in the future when we eat meat there are three types that we must not eat and what these three are as meats where we have, where we have seen heard or had suspicions and when it's in meat that we said uh, seen or hearing or having suspicion. So seeing means when you actually see the slaughter yourself. Hearing means that if there's an individual whom you have confidence, who's credible, and, uh, and actually hear that from them that it was killed for your sake. And suspicion means that if you suspect that it was killed for your sake. Well, those are what it should be. And if you, if you see, have not seen, have not heard, or have no suspicion that it was slaughtered for your sake, then that is pure meat and then you can eat it as you wish. If the, if the, it was slaughtered, if the animal was slaughtered for the sake of a bhikkhu or a bhikkhu, uh, bhikkhus or novices, they were not allowed to eat it. But there's something strange in here, though. It's that it's, it's something strange that says, uh, if it's killed for the sake of a bhikkhu, bhikkhus and novices are not allowed to eat. Bhikkhunas, nuns, and nuns in trainings, novice nuns, and laymen and laymen. And so, like, basically, if it's not, if it's killed for a picture, as so bhikkhus and novices are not allowed to eat it. But then it says bhikkhus and nuns in training are allowed, and novice nuns. Now, if it is killed for bhikkhunas, nuns, and trainings or novices, then, then the bhikkhunas, nuns, and novices, and laymen, laymen, laymen are, are not allowed to eat it. So basically, it's saying that. It, those for whom it was, whose sake it was slaughtered, are not allowed to eat it. 
Now, as I mentioned before, this is the background story or the source for, for the rules about the not eating meat that was um, that has appear in the three sorts of ways. Now, also, in terms of the Vinayavastu, the topics of the Vinaya, uh, Sarvast of the Mula Sarvastavada in the Tibetan tradition, there's a very similar text. And so, uh, that is a text and there's a generally it's a similar and the buddha was staying in the house on the bank uh, on the market house in Vaishali. and here then a captain named nolabai so if you uh, if you search for someone named a captain named uh, lion then uh then you find this one if you look for a general lion then you won't find it but because there are different uh, different events described above them so the words are slightly different but the actual meaning is the same In any case, <coughs> what is in uh, Tibetan, if you compare what is in the Tibetan uh, scriptures and what is in the Mahishashika scriptures that are preserved in Chinese, I think that the Mahishashika scripture, scriptures are actually clearer as I see it. But in any case, uh, when the Buddha was, basically the story is that uh, when, because these Jain students had said that uh, General Lion had given um, meat to, uh, to the Sangha, and they said that it was killed specifically for the Sangha, that's the reason, that's the event behind the, uh, behind the rules for not eating the three, three types of meat. Now also, There also is a quotation from the um, there is also a scripture from the there is also a scripture Okay, there's a Tamra Shatya school, which is written in text. It was preserved in Chinese as well, and I have translated from that to quote it. It says, received with seeing, what is gained by seeing, if you do not see and under their individual killer, but receive it for a bit of sake, there's no offense if you eat it, and so forth. Now, the Tamra Shita, uh, Tamra, uh, Tamra there's, this is one of the 18 original schools of Buddhism. And this is uh, this uh, this uh, is a school that primarily developed in Sinha, or the region of si Sri Lanka, and so this is recorded in the histories. Uh, this Tamraj, uh, Tamrashit Chatya school is actually considered like the source of the Theravada uh, the source of the Theravada school, and so it's like, considered part of the Theravada school. And they also have a text called called the Great Treasury of All That Is Seen to Be Excellent, or the Samatapasa Adika. And this is in the Pali language. And I think that this is a very detailed description of the uh, three three meat that is a pure for the three reasons. So I have translated this script for, uh, this quotation from Chinese. And so what it says is, if I read it, it's strange, but basically the main meanings, the main points of this is, there is received through seeing. There are three ways that you can get it. There are the way from receiving it through seeing. When receiving through uh, seeing means, if you see another individual slaughter the animal, but if it is not for the bhikshu's sake, you see this individual centered, but then later, then you get the meat, uh, but there's no offense of meeting the, that meat. Because it was not killed for that uh, for that monastic, so there's no offense to eat it. Now received through hearing, says if the bhikshu himself hears the sound of the slaughter, so here's the sound of the animal being slaughtered. This, but it was not slaughtered for the bhikshu's sake. Then if the bhikshu receives the meat and eats it, there is no offense. Now received through that is received through hearing. Received through suspicion means. That when pictures go to the town on their alms round and see this, see fresh meat with um, 
uh, with the uh, that the donors have fresh meat. And if they're seeing fresh meat, the uh, the butchers might think that it is uh, uh, killed for the butchers. Now, if the if the donor then says that it is not killed specifically for the butchers, then there is no offense to eating that meat. Likewise. If the donor invites bitchers and one of them is senior and one is junior, now they both come and when they offered meat to the two of them, when offering that, that meat, if the junior thinks, okay, this meat was was slaughtered for the senior bitchers, it wasn't uh, slaughtered for my sake. So if I eat it, there won't be an offense. That, if they think that, now the elder monk thinks, this is killed for the junior monks that Bhikshu is saying, not for mine. So if I eat it, there won't be an offense. And so they each harbor these doubts about each other. And because they have this uh, these doubts, they don't can't really decide and they don't really know. If they if they both eat it, then there's uh, if they eat it, then there's no offense. If it was killed for a Bhikshu's sake, but the Bhikshu does not know to the is offered to it until after he's hit it, and there's no offense because he didn't know. But the most important thing is, is that when the when the picture is offered to me, then the picture has to ask questions. When you say, was this, was this slaughtered for my sake? You have to ask. If you do not ask, uh, if you do not ask, then you cannot determine whether it the meat was impure in the three ways or not. For example, it's similar like pig, uh, pork, and and bear are very similar. So when you are offered it, you have to ask, is this is this bear meat? Because you are not allowed to eat bear meat. And so for that reason, you need to ask. Uh, it's very important to ask the questions. So the most important thing is that is the most important thing is that it depends upon, not upon the person who is receiving it, but upon the donors. So the, the, the donor generally knows, so you, the bishop um, must ask the uh, donor about the meat. And so that is, uh, describes it very, very clearly. No, I basically just translated them, and I I didn't have time to proofread them properly, proofread the spelling properly. Now, if you look at this, uh, uh, if you look at this this uh, citation during the, in the time of the Tamara Ashita. Uh, we have this similar from the quotation from that. When bhikshus are going on their alms round, if they're going to ask, beg for food, basically, when they're offered food, then before they accept, they have to ask about it. You need to examine where is it is pure in the three ways or not. If it is for your your own sake or for the sake of the monastics, if it is meat that the animal is slaughtered for their purpose and uh, then offered, then it is impure meat and it may not be eaten. And so what this shows is that the bhikshus, if they eat it, uh, if many animals are, uh, if the animals, if the bhikshus are not careful about eating animals that are slaughtered for their uh, sake, then there's the danger that many animals will be slaughtered for the sake of the sangha. And so for that reason, there would be there's a harm to doing this. That is why there's an offense. Now, there's also a, a Sarvastivada scripture called the uh, Ten Sections of the Vinaya. Uh, and this is from the Sarvastivada tradition. It is in the Chinese tradition, and there's a spelling mistake that I need to uh, mistake. If um, and if I don't fix it, I won't. I won't feel comfortable. So now the spelling is fixed. So this uh, the ten sections of the Vinaya, the Dasha Banavara Vinaya, the Sarvastivada tradition writes. What it says here is, to that circumstance, the Bhagavan assembled the Sangha. Now, so as I mentioned before, there was the event that happened with the general lion. And because of that circumstance, the Bhagavan assembled the Sangha and he spoke to the Sangha. And when he said to them, what he said is, 
you may not eat pure meat that is pure in the three ways. And what are the three ways? By seeing with your own eyes, or hearing with your ears, or have a suspecting in your mind. If that happens, then you're not allowed to eat the, eat the meat. What is seeing with your eyes is in your actual sight. You see a living creature slaughtered for your own sake. That is uh, seeing on your own. And seeing means if a credible individual, not just some, not just some. And that's just not some, if any old person comes and say it was, it was slaughtered for your sake, you shouldn't believe it. But if it's a credible individual, it tells you that living being was slaughtered for your sake, then that uh, type of meat shouldn't be eaten. Now, what is suspect of pure, through pure suspicions? And for, there, there are some circumstances that you have suspicion, like there's some reason why you think that, it's like maybe there's like the vigil, another. There's like no butcher in that region. Because there's no butcher, then it's possible that the animal, uh, that the household itself must have slaughtered the animal. Since there's no butcher to uh, sl uh, uh, slaughter the animals, it's probably the, the household that it slaughtered it. And there are no animals that naturally died naturally in that region. And the leader of the household is someone who usually, who, uh, who is uh, who does a lot of misdeeds and kills an, uh, kills many animals? Then there's a danger that they uh, that they killed it for your sake. Then there is the if you a reason to have a suspicion, and so you should not eat that. That now you, meat. Um, so that is a way that there are three reasons why meat would be impure. Now meat that is in, that is pure of those three ways may be eaten. So this is what it says in the Sarvastivada scriptures. Likewise, in Chinese Buddhism, like for example, in Tibet, we practice the Mula Sarvastivada tradition. That is our Vinaya practice. And now in the Chinese Buddhism, we primarily practice the Dharmaguptaka tradition of uh, tradition. So here is something that I've translated from, uh, tra from the Chinese. I do not allow you to eat meat that is impure because of these three reasons. Because if you see that it's slaughtered for your sake, or hear from a credible individual that is killed for his sake, or, and here what's uh, special here is if, if you go to that household and you see the the animal's head or the animal's hide or the animal's hair and so forth, or if you see the feet and limbs and so forth and the blood and so forth, or if that the individual, the, the leader, the, the head of the household, if someone acts on the 10 of virtuous actions and always kills or habitually kills, then there's the danger that it was killed for your own sake, and for that reason, if for that reason you uh, are, have suspicions, then you may not eat that meat. P meat that is pure in the three ways may be eaten, and so that means if you have not seen, have not heard, and do not suspect, uh, if it's pure of the of being seen or hearing or suspicion, then it may be eaten. Likewise, there's the Mahashashika school, and from the five sections of Vinaya from the Mahishashika school, there's a very similar uh, scripture, but it's a little bit different about it. It's basically the same, but one, uh, what's different about this is that in this, that if it's killed for eviction bitches, then as I said, it's similar as I said to what I said before, it's killed for the sake of bitches, bitches and novices are not allowed it. If it is killed for bitches and nuns and trainings, uh, bhikshus and bhikshunis and novice sons are and lay, and lay people are able to eat it. So basically, those for whose sake the animal was slaughtered are not allowed to eat the meat. Now the last one, the last citation I'd like to give is from the Mahasangka Vinaya. And this Vinaya, this Mahasangka Vinaya is probably only in Chinese. How this Chinese came is that in the fourth monk, as I mentioned before, the Chinese monk uh, Dharma Light went to India, and from central uh, and he, in central India he ra he uh, got this text, then it brought it back to China. Later, than the Indian master, he translated it with the Indian master Buddha Bhadra. Uh, he translated it together with Buddha Bhadra. Now, what it says in here is. 
slaughtered for one's own sake means slaughtered for a bhikshu's sake. Slaughtered for a bhikshu's sake may not be a bhikshu, bhikshuni, nanatrani, lanat, anavastan, lemon, or lemon. So it's a little bit different than what was said in the Mahishashaka school. So, uh, so basically it's saying that no one who is a monastic may eat the meat. So the bhikshu, if it's now the the Mahishashaka school said if it's killed for the bhikshu, then that's the then only the bhikshu does, is not allowed to eat it, but the others may eat it. But here it says that any monastic may not eat it. So if it's uh, so the Mahishashaka school says that if it's uh, killed for the bhikshu's sake, then the bhikshus and the novices may not eat it, but the others may eat it. But here it says that if it's slaughtered for a bhikshu, then it may not eat, be eaten for the bhikshu, bhikshu uh, nuns and trainers, novices, and so forth. It's the same. It is the same for what is slaughtered for a layperson's sake. Now, this is very difficult. It is the same for what is slaughtered for a layperson's sake. Uh, it may not be eaten by any bhikshu, through it may not be eaten by any lay people. It's the same. If what is slaughtered for the. the the uh, it is the same for anyone or for any bitcher or or so forth if it was slaughtered for a lay person then it may not be eaten by the bitchers and obviously the bitchers and so forth so except for the th uh three types that are uh uh that are uh, the three types those that are uh, from seeing hearing and suspecting and so So I've given uh, quotations from five of the 18 original schools of Buddhism. So the basically the, the, the citations from five of the different uh, Vinaya, and most of these I have translated from the Chinese. And among them, The first three are probably uh, taught for the pictures. And the last two also say that a household or lay practitioners with the five precepts, whether male or female, may not eat the meat that is impure in the three ways. Whether your picture, whether you are a monastic or lay people, it's important to know whether the the uh, meat is uh, pure in the three ways. So basically, in all the different three uh, in all the types of vinaya, we, uh, it is important that we know what the uh, it is important to eat meat that is uh, pure in the three ways. And so we need to understand what is what the three pure meat is pure in the three ways. So what does it mean to say it's three in the pure pure ways? So what it means. So what it means essentially is that whether it is a chicken or a, or, or a pig or whether it's an ox, if you actually see with your own, uh, if you don't see with your own eyes that it's slaughtered for your sake. Or no one else tells you that it was slaughtered for your sake. So you don't hear it from anyone else. And that person who has to be someone that's credible not just some ordinary person, it has to be just a, not just any old person. And if there's a suspicion or doubt that it might have been slaughtered for your own sake, it should not have, you should not have any such doubt. Yeah. When you talk about the threefold purity, it has, has those three, you know, to be free of the being seen, heard, or so, the suspicion. And so that's not actually all that easy in particular. If we think about the crux or the essence, if we talk about the most clear uh, clear descriptions of this are in the Sarvastavada and the Dharmaguptaka Vinaya. If we do it in according to the Sarvastavada Vinaya, it means that in that place that there is a butcher's house, it died naturally and the household did not kill for your sake. This is what it says, right? What need, what, the, the three aspects that need to be there. That household is not a butcher. The household, of course, is not a... And we, we need to know that it's not a butcher or a household that kills uh, animals. And we need to know that it's not a place that's 
uh, that uh, sells me, because if they sell me, it's not possible that they kill. And that meat, and we have to know that it's not killed specifically for the uh for the uh for the uh for the monastic sake but instead that it's that that householder who practices the 10 virtues purchased for the uh for the uh, for, for the monastic sake so they have to know that it's not it was not slaughtered specifically for the bhikkhu's sake but went to go uh, but particularly went to, uh, went intentionally to buy meat that was not killed for the monastic seat and then offered it to the bhikkhus similarly what it says in the dharma book of the Vikr is that when you go into the house when you go to the house of the person who's giving the meat if you see the hat and the, the limbs or the hide and the hair and the blow and so forth you don't see that there and that individual is not a butcher is, and is not the actual, not only is the, not the butcher but is also someone who keeps the rules of the ten virtues, someone who has given up the, um, uh, given up uh, k uh, taking life. And so someone who you believe is, this is someone who could not possibly have killed a, a sentient being for my sake. Not only are they not, uh, the household is not a, a, a big, a big not a butcher, but it's also possible that they might have a call, uh, uh, summoned a butcher to come in. So there's someone who keeps the ten virtues, because they keep the the rules of the ten virtues. Then they, uh, you not, may not kill for your uh, yourself, nor may you uh, have another kill for your sake. And so you believe that they wouldn't have summoned anyone else to kill to slaughter the animal for your sake. Likewise, if we look at the uh, Sarvastivada ten scriptures of the Bunny, what it says is that. It's like in the in the India, they used to have great uh, offering feasts. So they'd have a big pujas, basically the great uh, great offering rituals. In those times, many people would gather, and at that time, for that there would be the meat of animals slaughtered for that particular uh, offering and that occasion agent, and people would distribute the meat. And even those celebrations, the, the Pictures are not allowed to go to those situations because if they go to, if you go to that sector, if you were in among the people out there, there would be animals slaughtered for that offering. And there'd be the danger that you'd be included among that. Now you would not, you, you were, for that reason, you would not be allowed to go to these great offering ceremonies. So, for example, if you look at this, if you go to get, get meat from, purchase meat from a meat seller, then there's actually pure as to whether that uh, meat is pure or not. Likewise, also in the Dharma Guptaka tradition, it says it's, it's similar. It says that well, if you go to a, if you go to a place where people make large are making large offerings, then there is a danger that they'll offer you all sorts of different meat, and you may not eat that. Likewise, in our Great Exposition and our Treasury of Abertan, in both of these texts, is that after an animal has been killed, if you skin the animal, uh, sell the animal, and cook the animals, uh, these are like ac ac actions that are compatible with taking life. And so for these reasons and those sources, both the Sarvastavada and the Dharmagupta traditions, if we if we look at their presentations of what is the, the threefold purity of meat, they are more narrow or have a more detailed or, or stricter presentation of what is uh, the threefold purity, and their practice is stricter. And so when you talk about Chinese Buddhism or with our Tibetan Buddhism, we all, there are the main sources from the Sarvastivada tradition. If we talk about the way the 18 schools developed, the, in the general way, to, the the basis that we did, the 
there are different bases for that. The first there is one is the, uh, the, the sources are the old horses of the Sri Lanka. That is one source for describing it. And one is, is the, the uh, and there's a text in the chart the uh, text in the Chinese tradition and also in the tradition that it describes the, the way the 18 schools developed. So these are the two main sources for describing the development of the eight different schools. When we talk about this, then there are the, of course, the, there are slight differences in terms of what the root schools are, but most schools, uh, scholars these to explain it, that the four roots are probably the Theravada school uh, and so the Theravada school and the Mahasanga school. These are the two main schools or the two original schools or the two, first divisions. And then from they, uh, they had some disagreements. And so they became, and then they, uh, then from these two, there were many different, different ones. Now the, uh, the Sarvastavada school developed from the Theravada school. So our Tibetan tradition and our Vinaya practice all comes from, from the Sarvastavada and the Chinese tradition primarily uh, also is from the, uh, comes within the Sarvastivada tradition. And so the, and so the practice of the, th the three type, the, the threefold purity of meat is stricter in these uh, Sarvastivada schools than in other schools. So normally we might think that it's fine for it to eat meat. And we say the reason we said because the the teacher allowed us to eat meat that is pure in three ways, but this is a kind of too this too simplistic way of thinking about it. It's like a, a it's a, the way a child a child would think about it, and the reason for that is that is if they could have Vinaya as a basis, then a monastic if a monastic was to go, they'd have to go and beg for the food, right? So you go to you go to a, a household and go to them. You couldn't go to a house and say, please give me meat. You couldn't say that. Please give me meat, give me potatoes, give me meat. You weren't allowed to say that. You'd have to eat. You could only eat what that household gave you. You couldn't say, I'm not going to take that, take that away. If they give you potatoes, I, uh, I'm not going to eat potatoes. You have to give me meat, meat. I give me chicken. You couldn't say, I have to have your chicken. You couldn't say that. If you went to an ordinary, if you went to a poor household, if the doctor if you said that, You'd say that the monastics are just like two, like they'd say those, uh, how could that, uh, the, the, if you went to a poor household, they'd say if, if the monk went to that household and said, please do this, then they, please give me meat, then the household think, I can't do that. We don't have that for ourselves. How can we give it? And so when you are offered meat, then you have to investigate whether it is pure in the three ways. Uh, and if it is not pure, then even uh, if you're so hungry that it's like your stomach is burning, then you're not allowed to eat it. So if you say that you can eat meat as pure in three ways, it means that you cannot eat meat, just any old meat. It's not saying that you, it's not saying that you feel like a wish to eat and then go up to the, to, and then to prove that we're allowed to eat, we say that we uh, eat, eat as pure in the three ways. It doesn't mean that you can eat whatever uh, 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 meat happened you get your fingers on. It doesn't mean that at all. You have to have a, a, a source for us and you can do. So this is another thing that we need to really think about. So now I think that is probably enough for today. So now what I'd like to speak about tomorrow is how meat is pro prohibited in the Manaya. Now, of course, there's one thing. Now, one reason I need to explain this There is the Sakya Pantita's um, uh, There is a there is a it is said in the Devadatta's uh, austerities that uh, that that not eating meat was in Devadatta's Devadatta's uh, austerities, and so for that reason, many people these days that we need that we should eat meat because otherwise we're following the Devadatta's austerities. That's one thing I need to speak about. And so now also in the Mahayana, there are some prohibitions about eating in general, regardless of whether it's pure in the three ways or not. And likewise, when we, there are many debates about eating meat in Tibet. 
No, I think there's actually not a whole lot of reason to debate about this, but I think I'd like to share some uh, thoughts about this. Also, these days in the world, how many animals are slaughtered? And so I'd like to speak about that. And I'd like to speak about the harm that comes to the environment from slaughtering animals for meat. And I'd also like to give a little brief introduction to about how uh, eating meat affects your health. And so I'd like to speak about that tomorrow. So that's about it. So the other day, uh, I did have to, uh, uh, I had to postpone it by one day. I to, I've got a little bit tired. I was working too hard and because my, my body got a little bit weak and so And also I thought that since I'm speaking about uh, eating meat and protecting sentient beings, so I thought I had to speak it to teach it as well as I could, so I delayed it by one day, so I ask you, I beg your pardon for that. Now actually, this teaching uh, is uh, to end on the 14th, but but there have been there, there are a couple of days when I was unable to eat uh, or it, it, a couple of days and unable to teach. And so for that reason, we'll be extend the teachings uh, by two days. So on the 15th, we'll have a day off. And then on the 16th and the 17th, we will have teachings. That's quite possible that what I say doesn't match what is in the announcement, but we're going to follow what's teaching in the in the announcement. Uh, my, my mind isn't so clear right now. So we'll follow what's written in the announcement. And on the last day, I thought we would do some sort of a guru yoga. We've spent now a month or so in discussing the uh, 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 liberation story of Mikio Dorje. And so because it's uh, to celebrate this uh, great opportunity, I thought we should do the great the Guru Yoga. No, but I haven't decided what type of Guru Yoga. Uh, we should maybe do something uh, so I think we should do something related to Mikhail Dorje. There's the four session Guru Yoga, and I thought maybe I should write something for it, but I don't know if I have time to write anything. But in any case, on the 17th, we will conclude the teachings. As I mentioned yet, next year, during the spring teachings, we will continue. I will continue to teach from the liberation story of Mikhail Dorje. So this is my plan. Yeah, actually, I thought today I said it's on the last day, but if I better say it today, it's better. We have the winter teaching, the guncha, for the kaiju shadras. And in addition now, we have the nuns, uh, we've changed for the, the nuns, uh, I thought we should change that to a, to the spring teaching, as I mentioned. So now we need a three of uh, a summer teaching. Now we can't do it all four seasons for the autumn teaching, probably good, but I think it's okay to do three of them: the winter teaching, the spring teaching, and the summer teaching. Now for the summer teaching, I often speak with the people, the shadras. And I'm able to, uh, to do uh, do some service for the shadows, but we also have the uh, tsokra, the the puja, uh, the puja monks and nuns. And I haven't haven't enabled to do anything in particular for them. And so for this year, from now on, uh, I would like to I thought I'd start a summer teaching in particular for the monks and nuns who who do puja. This would be primarily related with the. Uh, ritual with the uh, practices of the Adam deities. And so this is specifically said for the, uh, it's maybe not a good way of saying, it, but this is basically for the practice uh, divisions. Sometimes we have like a conflict between the, the, the Shadras and the Tsokhtra, between the study and the practice. And so it's, it's, I don't know what, what word we can use for this. But for this, for the sake of the ritual, during the summer, we will have the summer teaching, and for their sake, 
we will have a special teaching re related to the seeker mantra practice. Now, I don't really know, but I, there's no choice but to pretend that I know, I know what to say. So in this, so this is uh, about related to the secret mantra. It's not something that'll be for the public in general. It'll be primarily for the monasteries and the nunneries. If it is something for, you know, for the whole public, then it wouldn't be right. So that is my plan. And so I thought I would mention that today. Now we talk about the, the, the practice. I would allow everyone to, uh, all of the shudras and the non-shudras to participate as well. When I say that it's a non-spring teacher, if you think this is for the nuns, our, our, our monasteries, I think it's not really for us. It's possibly might misunderstand it in that way. And I didn't really have a chance to explain this clearly. So the specific students is is a difference, the difference in who it's specifically taught for, but in actuality, it is for all of our monasteries and nunneries. And it's just important that you all understand this. So thank you. So now we recite the closing prayers. Sibia, Zoder, Jogin, Yodrushaw.